Hello everyone. Welcome to today's video session on casting defects. I am Dr. Bharat Venjamuri from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Global Academy of Technology. Foundry production is a complex multi-step process. The technical level of each process varies greatly. Skills of the operator, quality management and equipment can affect the final quality of the casting. In today's video session, we will be discussing about why the castings are rejected at different stages. We will also look into different types of casting defects and we will be talking about how to classify the defects as many times wrong diagnosis may lead to wrong decision. If we talk about casting defects, these numbers are really scary. Castings in case of production foundry which are producing the same part year after year, for example, railways, even they have 2 to 5 percent rejection. If we go to other extreme, steel foundries and aluminum foundries taking up jobbing orders, which means every time they take up a new project, develop a new casting and then manufacture, they have 10 to 20 percent rejection. It sounds like a big waste. Producing 5000 castings and rejecting 1000 castings sounds like a bad idea. We are wasting production resources. It's a huge loss for an industry. Let us understand how do we analyze the defects and how to classify the casting defects. The basic identification of the defects is by appearance. That is, by just looking at the castings, we can identify the defects. Whether it is a projection or a cavity or it has got any discontinuities or if the component has poor surface finish just by appearance it can give us the first look of information later see that if the defect is internal or external next classification is about whether the defect, defect is critical like irreparable or repairable also the defects are analyzed based on the time or stage the defect was discovered, whether the defect was found during the casting stage or during machining or when the product is in service. The percentage of castings being rejected in industries has made us to rethink about the defects and their effect on the production. Let us now understand each defect in detail. Flash is one of the most frequently occurring casting defects. If the cavity is not closed properly, we get a defect across the parting lane where the two moles are not meeting properly. Flash is an irregular fin around the part at the parting line. It is typically a thin sheet of metal that forms at the parting faces. Such a defect is caused by excess metal escaping at the joint. If the cavity is not closed properly or due to poor contact between the moles. Also, such a defect is caused due to insufficient weight on the mold or improper clamping of the flask that lead to the gap between the moles. Such a defect can be avoided by proper assembly of the mold and the cores. There should be enough weight on the top part of the mold so that the two parts fit together tightly. Flash can be removed by breaking it off with a hammer or pliers and filing it down onto the parting line. Another effect of improper closing of mold cavity is mismatch or mold shift, where the parts are aligned properly but shifts across the parting plane. Mismatch is a horizontal shift between the sides of the casting. It is formed at the parting surface mainly due to misalignment between the mold halves. Some causes of the shift include loose box pins, inaccurate pattern double pins or carelessness in placing the cope on the drag causing misalignment. If you are experiencing a shift, try using the match plate pattern and check for the alignment. Make sure to use proper molding box and closing pins. Core shift is similar to the mold shift, but it is the core that is misaligned 
in this case and not the mold. Core shift is usually reflected as a vertical displacement. Core shift is a change in location, direction or shape of axis of the hole in the casting. It is caused by incorrect design of core on their placement in the mold. Blow hole is a large smooth cavity below the top surface of the casting caused due to air or gas entrapment. The blow holes that appear on the surface of the cast are easier to detect. A subsurface blow hole appears on the inside of the casting and usually is not visible until machining. Subsurface blow holes can be difficult to detect before machining. To detect these subsurface blow holes, we need to make use of non-destructive testing methods like ultrasonic testing, magnetic testing or X-ray analysis. Pin holes also sometimes referred as porosities are very tiny holes usually found in the upper part of the mold. They usually appear in large numbers together either at the surface or just below the surface of the casting. They are always visible to the naked eyes and don't require a specific equipment to identify it. They are caused due to excessive moisture content of the molding sand and inadequate gas permeability of the sand. The potential solutions to reduce such defects include incorporating good fluxing and melting practices such as melting the metal in vacuum or under a flux environment that prevents contact with the atmosphere. Increasing the gas permeability of the sand can also reduce this defect. The permeability of the mold and the cores must be high so that air and gas can easily escape from the mold cavity. Dry the molds and the cores before use and increase rate of solidification by reducing the metal temperature during casting. Cold shut is a surface defect having a line or crack with a round edge on the casting surface. This defect is visible to the naked eye and often results in rejecting the casting as it creates a weak spot. When the molten metal enters the mold from two gates, the streams will meet at a junction. Low temperatures can prevent fusion at this junction causing the streams to solidify before fusion, creating a cold shut. Cold shut is usually a result of lack of fluidity of the molten metal or a poor design of the gating system. The best way to prevent cold shut is to increase fluidity of the molten metal. This can be done in few ways. Optimize the gating system to minimize narrow cross paths and ensure short flow paths. Increase the pouring temperature to prevent premature solidification. Improve gas permeability of the mold. Inclusions include sand or slag particles embedded in the castings. Slag inclusion is caused when molten metal containing slag particles is poured into the mold cavities and solidifies. To avoid the inclusions, remove slag particles from the molten metal before pouring it into the mold cavity. One can remove the slag by melting the metal with a flux in an inert atmosphere. Also, the slag can be removed by adding ingredients to the mixture to cause slag to float up to the top where we can easily remove it. A shrinkage cavity is a depression in casting which occurs during solidification process. Shrinkage can result in two types of casting defects, open shrinkage defects and close shrinkage defects. Open shrinkage defects are open to the atmosphere. Closed shrinkage defects are also known as shrinkage porosity. These defects are forming within the casting. Shrinkage defects can be prevented by improving the casting structure. These defects can be avoided by designing a proper gate system 
with risers that ensure a continuous flow of molten metal. Hot tears is a crack on the casting surface, usually near the thicker sections of the casting. It is caused due to resistance of a hard mold to casting contraction. If the solidifying metal does not have enough strength to resist tensile forces during solidification, hot tears will appear. Hot tears are mostly caused by poor mold design. Modifying the mold to improve collapsibility can easily resolve these issues. Misruns are closely related to cold shut. The liquid metal does not completely fill the mold cavity. A misrun is the unfilled portion or space in the mold. Misruns occur when the liquid metal is too cold to flow to the extremities of the mold cavity. Misrun, similar to cold shut, is usually a result of lack of fluidity of the molten metal or poor design of the guiding system. To avoid misrun, one need to have a proper mold design, gating system design and modern metal fluidity. Knowledge of casting defects and causes is essential to manage casting quality. One should set a clear defect tolerances and quality expectations before production. Ultimately, the manufacturer must strictly control quality of each casting process. And thank you my dear viewers for being present here. We'll be meeting in the next video session. Till then, bye. Have a nice day.